Hi everyone, welcome to the Living Coast in your living room. My name is Ashley, I'm one of the educators here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. The Living Coast Discovery Center is a small zoo and aquarium down at in Chula Vista at San Diego Bay. We're very uniquely located on the Sweetwater Marsh National Wildlife Refuge. So when we get the chance, feel free to come on down and visit us and check us out. Now, we're very lucky right now to be able to bring our animals into your living room so that you can learn a little bit about our native species during this trying time. Now, be sure to join us every day here at 11 a.m. on Facebook for all kinds of different live videos, interactive questions, as well as meeting our animals up close. Now, today's focus, we're actually gonna be learning about crustaceans. Have you ever heard of crustaceans before? Crustaceans is kind of a weird word, but you probably have heard of it before. Crustaceans are things like crabs and lobsters and crayfish. Here on my table, I have a crab stuffed animal that you've probably seen before. I also have a hermit crab stuffed animal here, so you can get a chance to check that guy out as well. And behind me, we actually have our crayfish. You probably can't see them very well. That's because they're really good at hiding, but later we'll get a chance to check them out up close. Now, crustaceans are a group of animals that include things like crabs, crayfish, and lobsters, but do those animals look the same? No, they don't. They look very different, but they do have a lot of similarities. One of the things that they all have that puts them together is actually their exoskeleton. Do you know what an exoskeleton is? What do you think that might mean? What is an exoskeleton? An exoskeleton helps provide them with their shape and their structure, and it also helps protect them. Does that sound similar to anything you know that you might have? Maybe inside of our bodies, do we have something too? We have what's called an endoskeleton. So inside of our body, we have bones that run the length of our body and they grow with us. As we get bigger, our bones are getting bigger, right? You don't have to go to the store and be like, oh, I need a new finger bone, my finger is too tight. Yeah, our bones are gonna grow with us, but an exoskeleton is one size. Now that means that our crabs and our crayfish friends, they actually have to molt just like we learned about with our lizards and our reptile friends, the snakes and the lizards the other day, they have to shed their skin in order to keep growing. Our crabs and other crustaceans, they actually have to molt. So it's a very similar process. I'm gonna grab one of those exoskeletons for you to see. Now this is the exoskeleton of a California spiny lobster. Now this lobster has its exoskeleton on the outside of its body. It's one piece and it's going to be one size. The lobster is running around on the bottom of the ocean floor, finding its food, looking for all kinds of different things to eat, and then its exoskeleton gets too tight. So what they actually have to do is they have to crack open their exoskeleton, they have to wiggle on out of it, and then they go and they hide underneath a rock. Now when they do that, they're actually going to regrow a new exoskeleton that is actually a little bit bigger than what they currently are. While they're doing that, they're going to actually pull in some water into their bodies, kind of puff themselves up nice and big to make it so their exoskeleton is just a little bit bigger than what they are, so then they can grow into it. So let's check out the next size. So now here's another exoskeleton of another lobster. So this one, has been hiding underneath the rocks and it grew. It missed a couple of stages between that last one and this one. They don't go straight to this size, but this is another example of those exoskeleton molts and how big and quickly they can get there. They're gonna keep swimming around in the ocean. They're gonna crawl on the bottom of the ocean floor, finding their food, and they're going to crack open, swim on out, wiggle their bodies on out, and go hide under a rock again. And then they're gonna get bigger and bigger So now I'm bringing you the next size of another one. So he's been hiding under the rock. He got bigger and bigger and bigger. And now look how big this one is. So this lobster has grown quite a bit. The exoskeleton has gotten bigger and bigger, allowing that lobster to keep growing. Now this lobster's doing that same thing, walking around on the bottom of the ocean floor, finding its food, eating and eating and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's gonna crack open its abdomen 
swim on out, wiggle its body on out, and then it's gonna go hide while it grows a new one. And then it comes out. Here comes another one. Nice and big. This one is huge, right? Oh yeah, this guy is giant. So this lobster was hiding underneath those rocks until its exoskeleton was nice and big. It was walking around, finding its food, grabbing onto it and eating it, eating it and eating it. And then it's going to crack open, wiggle its body on out and it's gonna go hide under that rock and grow another one. Now, this one is much bigger than some of the other ones we've been looking at, so let's get an up close look at it. So this part, this part of the lobster's exoskeleton is called the carapace. This is the main part, and this actually is where all the internal organs are gonna be. If you look closely right here, you can see that's actually where the eye is. Yeah, and then this part right here, Although this exoskeleton is missing some parts, it still shows you what's going on. This big chunk right here, this is actually part of the antenna, where the antenna would grow. Now, once these exoskeletons have been molted, they become really fragile. So, unfortunately, sometimes we lose some of the legs as we use them for teaching tools, but there's still great chances for you to get a chance to check them out and see up close. Now, this is the tail of the lobster, and the tail is what allows it to be able to swim. So they'll actually use their tail to push themselves backwards, they propel themselves backwards. And tails are gonna be used on lobsters and crayfish, but our crabs, they don't really have those. So in a moment, we're gonna check out our lobsters, up, our crabs, excuse me, up close. You get a chance to check those guys out. All right, for those of you that are just joining us again today, welcome to the Living Coast in your living room. My name is Ashley, and I'm one of our educators here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. Now, right now, we're going over some crustacean characteristics, what puts them together. We just went over exoskeletons and talked about how they molt, how they shed that process, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger as they're doing so. Now, we're actually gonna move into the other characteristic that puts all crustaceans together, and that actually has to do with their appendages. All crustaceans have jointed appendages, which is a really fancy way of saying joints, and legs. Appendages of what they have, they have legs. So we're gonna get a nice up close look at one of my crab friends over here. All right, so in this container here, we are actually housing two different types of crabs. So this one right here, this is actually going to be a hermit crab, and right there, and right over there, that's going to be two yellow shore crabs. So give me one second and I'm gonna go ahead and get them out and you guys can get a chance to check them out. Whenever we handle our animals, we always wanna make sure we're giving them a nice safe environment to interact with. So I'm going to hold my yellow shore crab here, give him a nice little burrow to make him feel comfortable and keep him over the water of this bucket. So if he crawls off my hand, he'll land in his nice little water and he'll be perfectly safe. Now this is a yellow shore crab and he's much smaller than those lobsters that we were just checking out, right? Yeah, but you can get a chance to check out him using his appendages. So let's get a chance and see how many legs we can count on him. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 different appendages. So you can see him using those eight different appendages to walk. So he uses eight as walking legs and those two big things in the front. Do you guys see those? What do you think those are called? Some of you might call those pinchers, but those are what we call in the science terms, chelipeds. Can you say chelipeds? That's kind of a weird word, right? Yeah, but chelipeds is the fancy science word we use to refer to pinchers on a crab or on a crayfish or even on a lobster. Now these chelipeds are what they use to grab onto their food and bring it to their mouth. Just like we talked about with those lobsters walking around on the bottom of the ocean floor, they had to find their food and they had to eat it, right? Well, they use their chelipeds to do so. The lobster we were checking out earlier had really small chelipeds compared to this crab. So you can see right here and right over here, he does have those chelipeds, and you can see I was able to bring my fingers really close to them, and he has not hurt me. 
Helipads are not made for just defense. They're actually used in a last resort if they feel threatened. Their first defense is actually going to be to run away if they feel unsafe. But you can see here, this crab friend is perfectly safe. So we're gonna go ahead and put him back down into his watery home. Now the kilopeds on a crayfish are a little bit different than our crab friends. Let's see if we can get an up close look at them. So inside of our crayfish home, we do have a couple of different crayfish inside of here. So it can, might be a little hard to see, but you can see he's got much larger kilopeds than our crab friend did. So he's got really big ones in the front, but he does have that elongated body, just like a lobster does as well. So that longer body with the tail on the end is what they're gonna use to help them swim around. Now crayfish are gonna be a little different than our crabs and our, cray, our lobsters, because they do live in freshwater environments, while crabs and lobsters live in the ocean. Now all crustaceans are going to be aquatic, but they are able to live in both ocean and fresh water. Do you guys want to get a chance to see our lobster molds up close? Did you guys know there are over 68,000 species of crustacean? That's crazy. Crustaceans include a large number of different animals from crabs to crayfish to lobsters to shrimp. There are so many more of them out there than what we could possibly cover in this video today. So if you're interested in learning more, go ahead and do some research. See what you can find out. And if you want to continue to learn about what you practice today with me, we actually are going to upload some worksheets where you can practice labeling the different parts of a lobster or a crayfish and learning a little bit more about those crabs and crayfish and lobsters. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Again, my name is Ashley and I'm here with Living Coast in Your Living Room where we're bringing you all kinds of different native animals up close and personal into your living rooms every day here on Facebook at 11 a.m. See you tomorrow.